world, I'm Sarah Matthews and in this video I'm going to be walking you through how I post-processed my monochrome data of the North American Nebula to get this final image in PixInsight. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, I am in PixInsight and I'm running version 1.8.9-1. I have my master light files from the three narrowband filters I imaged the North American Nebula through. This is hydrogen alpha, this is oxygen three, and this is sulfur two. Uh, they are in a linear state. I've just applied a screen transfer function auto stretch to them so we can see what we're working with, but I will be doing the majority of the cleanup of these images in a linear state before I do any permanent stretching. So the first thing we're gonna do while they are in a linear state is crop any black edges or weird edges um, from field rotation during the image integration process uh, like this. So I believe S2 had the most field rotation out of the three, so I'll crop that one first. And to do this properly and to make sure that all the images are aligned with the same dimensions, I'm going to use the dynamic crop process. So I'm going to come up here to process, down here to geometry, dynamic crop, and I'm going to minimize O3 and HA, bring over S2. Just going to click on it reset and I'm going to start bringing in those edges over here down here and over here okay I am happy with that I'm just going to create a new instance so that it could be applied to O3 and HA I'm just going to left click on the right triangle here and drag down it's going to be that instance and now I'm just going to press apply to um, S2. So on the green check mark, looks good. So minimize that. I can close dynamic crop, open up O3, apply dynamic crop again. Looks good. HA, do the same thing. All right, looks good. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is some noise reduction. I'm gonna start with HA, so I'll minimize S2, and open up HA. I'm gonna come up here to process, down here to noise reduction, multi-scale linear transform, and it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna keep everything up here the same. Um, I'm going to enable noise reduction on layer one, and I'm going to increase the threshold to four. Um, the threshold is essentially how strong of the noise reduction do you want on this layer, and typically layers one and two of your image are going to have the most noise, so anywhere between three and five are, are good settings there. So I'm going to start with four, and then the amount, which is essentially um, what blending percentage should be from the new image and the old image uh, for that final image, I'm going to keep it at one, and then the iterations I'm going to keep at one, which is basically how many times should this run on this specific layer. So. Moving on to layer two, I'm gonna enable noise reduction again. I'm gonna keep the threshold to three. The amount, I'm gonna reduce down to 0.75, and I'm gonna keep the iterations at one. Come now over here to layer three, enable noise reduction. I'm going to reduce the threshold down to two, and then the amount is gonna be 0.5, with the iterations one. And then for uh, layer four, I'm gonna enable noise reduction again. For the threshold, I'm gonna have it at two, and the amount I'm gonna have at 0.25, and iterations at one. Um, so I'm just gonna apply that to HA. All right, now I'm just gonna apply that to O3. All right, now I'm just gonna apply that to S2. All right, that looks good. So you can close out multi-scale linear transform. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is create a luminance layer. Um, by creating a luminance layer, this is going to be added back into um, our final color image, and that's just going to help us enhance the details and improve contrast and really make that final image pop. Um, so I'm going to be sharpening um, my luminance image, and to do that, I'm going to cr to actually just duplicate my HA data. Um, so just duplicate. Minimize HA, change the identifier to Loom, and you don't have to use the HA image um, as your luminance. You could um, use any any one of these uh, that you'd like, or you can do a combination of all of these. 
So this is um, what I'm going to use for this data set, and the next thing I'm going to do is uh, sharpen it. Um, so I'm going to come over here to process all processes down here to deconvolution, and it's going to look like this. Um, I could get into a little bit more of the intricacies of deconvolution, but I'm going to try to keep it simple for now. Um, um, so I'm going to decrease the standard deviation of the star size to 1.5. I find that to be fairly uh, suitable for my setup. Um, you might need to just kind of mess around to see what works best for yours so that um, you see what is most optimal so you're not getting um, artifacts. And so I'm going to just decrease the iterations um, to eight. And I'm actually going to create a preview view first just to see how well that does before I apply it. So increase that. Okay, now we can apply. All right, well, it looks like it did a pretty good job on the preview, so I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna delete the preview and apply these settings um, to the overall image. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna close out the deconvolution and minimize the luminance image. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do before we color combine our monochrome images is make sure that the histograms really match one another so that one color doesn't end up dominating the other colors in the final image and essentially just create more consistent data um, because just generally due to the varying conditions of the night sky throughout a night of imaging or various nights of imaging with the different phases of the moon uh, with more or less light pollution as well as just like what filter is being used, the average brightness of the background signal may not match up well between images we need to color combine so it's just generally good practice to make sure that you match up the average background and the signal brightness between the images that we're going to color combine. Um, so the process that's responsible for this is linear fit. So we're going to come up here to process all processes down here to linear fit. And it looks like this. So how linear fit works is that it essentially assumes that um, a math mathematically linear function can model the difference in average backgrounds and signal brightness between a reference image that you choose and the target images you apply uh, the process to. So um, the reference image I'm going to be using today is HA. Typically you're going to want to use the image with the lowest median value, um, but sometimes uh, I've seen that you should use the um, image with the highest median value. Um, just depends on what your data set is, but um, try the lowest median value first. So uh, to find out what that is, just come here to process all processes down here to statistics. It's going to look like this. And the first one we're going to look at is HA. And so it looks like the median value for HA is 0 0.0007866. And then for O3, the median value is 0 0.0011. 195 and then for s2 that median value looks to be 0 0.0009192 so ha is um, the image with the lowest median value so we're going to use that as our reference image so i'm going to just come up here select ha press ok you can minimize ha because i'm going to apply this to o3 and s2 it's a very fairly quick process. Okay, it's ready. I can minimize O3, open up S2, and apply that. S2. And I'm just going to close out linear fit. So now if you open up statistics and look at, again, HA had the median value of 0 0.007866. Come over here to O3 median value is roughly the same, and that median value is roughly the same. So the next thing that we're going to do before we color combine is um, stretch our monochrome images. Uh, typically I don't stretch my images before I color combine, but because I'm going to be doing a dynamic um, narrowband color combination, I want a little bit more control over the outcome of the colors of my image, so I am going to stretch them, and to do that I am going to use the histogram transformation tool. So I'm going to come up here to process, all processes, histogram transformation, and it looks like this. I'm going to start with HA, so make sure that it is not auto-stretched. I'm going to open up this preview window, 
and then make sure you have HA selected in the view. And I'm just going to start bringing over this mid-tone, these mid-tones over, press apply, reset, do it again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, okay, reset, do it again, press apply, reset, and I'm just going to bring it over to about here, bring down my shadows to about here, press apply, okay, I am happy with that. So I'm just going to close the preview, and reset this. So current median value is 0 0.15. So I'm just going to try to get those images, those other monochrome images, to roughly the same spot. So I'm going to start with O3. I can minimize HA. Okay. Open up the preview window. Change the view to O3. Remove that auto stretch, bring that mid-tone over, press apply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, reset, and bring it over again. Supply, reset it, probably bring it over to about here, that peak, bring that with the shadows over to about here, press apply, right. gonna press reset and I'm happy with that but let's see what it looks like statistics wise so HA again was 0 0.15 O3 is about 0 0.13 so I could bring up the midtones just a little bit come over here to the real-time preview it's at 0.17 Okay, I'm going to be happy with that. By that. Okay, so O3. Perfect. Alright. Okay, minimize O3. Put up S2. the screen transfer function, put up a history and transformation, preview window, make sure you're looking at S2, okay, bring that mid-tone bar over, press apply, press reset, do it again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, Supply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, press apply, reset, bring it over again, 
and then move the shadows over to about here. Let's see what that looks like statistics wise. Go to the real time preview. So the median is at 0, 1, 2. I could probably increase this up just a bit. Okay. I'm good with that. Let's apply it. Alright. Just gonna minimize histogram transformation. How does S2 look? Okay, 0 0.15. Okay, so everything is about 0 0.15. Close out the preview. I can minimize S2. I can actually close histogram transformation and statistics. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is some star removal. Sometimes I do this before I stretch the image, but with this data set, I was getting um, some leftover stars um, when I did it in a linear state. So um, I'm going to go here to process object recognition star exterminator. You can also use star net plus plus, um, or you can just not do this at all. But um, for star exterminator, um, I'm just going to click generate star image, and I'm going to unscreen the stars. Um, apparently this um, provides a better um, option for uh, when you do recombine the stars if you're planning on processing the image um, or the images further. So I'm going to do that and I will also include details on how you can um, install both the star exterminator uh, process and star net plus plus. So I'm going to press apply and let it do its thing. So that is done. Put HA stars over here. I can minimize HA, open up O3, and apply star exterminator to O3. Alright, so the O3 is done. I'm just going to move O3 stars here, minimize O3, S2, do the same. Alright, so S2 is ready. I'm just going to put the stars back over here. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is color combine our monochrome images, and we're going to be using my favorite PixInsight process, and that is, of course, Pixel Math. So we're going to come up here to Process, All Processes, down here to Pixel Math, and it looks like this. So today I'm going to be doing. Um, a color palette that is essentially a mixture of an SHO palette and an HOO palette by using a dynamic combination expression called 4x. And so I came across Polyman Astro's YouTube tutorial of this concept recently and I gave it a try and I absolutely loved the results. So please go check out his YouTube channel. I've included a link to the 4x video of his in the details below. So what is a dyna dynamic color combination? Well, it's essentially allowing us to tell pixel math how much of each of these different narrow band images we want in our final color image and where, essentially. But first we need to create dynamic images to do this and we're going to create two of them before we create the final 4x image. Um, so this first image is going to be called O. So just going to create a new image and the image ID is going to be O. And so the expression is going to look like this. It's going to be O3. So our O3 image to the power of, using that little squiggle line, to not O3. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is I'm taking O3 and then I'm putting that to the power of not O3. And what the not O3 means is that whatever O3 is, do 1 minus O3 as you saw before. So whatever O3 is, that is the inversion of what O3 is. So it's essentially a power of inverted pixels. Um, and so the color space is grayscale. Um, and then I'm just going to run that expression. And the image that we're going to get looks like this. So it's a little bit brighter than our O3 image. We can take a peek at O3, compare. So it is quite a bit brighter, which is handy for what we're trying to do. So the next expression that we're going to create for our dynamic image is a image called HO. So I'm just going to change the image ID to OHO. So the expression looks like this. It's going to be our HA image times O3, close the parenthesis, to the power of not HA times O3. 
So basically what we're going to get is an image where HA and O3 are both bright. So I'm going to press apply. Minimize that. So it's fairly faint. But you can see through here it is a bit brighter than through here. Perfect. I'm just going to move that over here. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is apply um, some curves transformation to the O and HO image before we go back to Pixel Math to uh, do our final color combination. So we're going to go up here to process all processes, curves transformation. I'm going to open up O. Just expand that a bit. Okay, open up the preview. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to try to do is bring out the contrast a little bit more like this bring down those darks to about here which I'm gonna move back up to O I'm gonna just bring up those midtones as well to about here okay let's go with that for now press apply Out of the preview tool. Okay, and for the HO image, I'm gonna do the same thing. Come up the preview, and I'm gonna have to bring it up quite a bit to about here. I need to do it one more time as well. Let's try these. Close the preview. Can minimize curves for now. All right, so this is what HO looks like. So I've just kind of made it pop a little bit more. Okay, so now we're just gonna open up Pixel Math again and we're gonna do our final color combination. And so for our four ex expression, we can unclick the use a single RGBK expression. So in our R channel, our red channel, we're gonna say our O image times S2 plus not O times HA. And what this means essentially is that where this O image is bright, we're mostly going to take our S2 image. And where it's not bright, so here, it's going to take HA. So for our green channel, our expression is going to look like this. We're going to take our HO image times HA plus not HO times O3. So essentially, where the HO image is bright, we're going to take HA in the green channel. And where it's not bright, it's going to take O3. And so we're going to put O3 in the blue channel. So we're going to do this, create a new image, call it 4x gonna be RGB and press apply all right so this is what our final colored image looks like don't worry we are gonna make it pop just a bit more so I'm actually just gonna put that, that down here so you can see there's a lot of uh, great uh, colors through here. Um, the blue pops a lot and the red as well and the yellow through um, this very nebulous region. So the next thing that we're going to do is create a um, luminance layer. Um, this is just going to be applied as a mask. So go up there and press on this bell. All right, this is it. So what I'm going to do is apply some curves transformation to it since this is going to be a mask. I'm actually just going to bring up dark lights, bring down the darks, shadows a bit, bring up the midtones, apply that. Okay, I might 
do that one more time actually. Okay. All right, so then we're just going to apply this as a mask. And then the first thing I'm gonna do actually is up that preview with the curve transformation and I'm gonna bring up those highlights just a bit. I'm gonna change this to maximum. Bring up the lights out here. Bring down the darks for some contrast. Apply that. Okay. And then I'm going to come over to here to mask and I'm going to invert it. So it's going to be um, protecting these, these light areas and we're just going to add some more contrast to these dark areas. I'm going to reset. Bring it up to here. I'm going to go to about here. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, reset, do that again. Okay, next up, right. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is add in our luminance image. So first thing that we need to do is actually remove the stars. So I'm gonna come up here to process object recognition star exterminator and I'm just going to do undo that and undo that and it is linear. Okay, so here is our luminance image without the stars. I am just going to do a uh, quick mask stretch. So I'm going up here to process all processes. Down here to mask stretch. I'm just going to keep everything as is. Okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do um, is apply our luminance image to our colored image. So we're going to go up here to process all processes. RGB combination, uncheck R, G, and B, and under L, I'm going to activate L, or Loom, and I'm just going to apply that to Borax. Alright, so we're going to have to um, increase the saturation, which is totally fine, so we'll close that, curves transformation. Alright, 
script utilities color mask. I'm going to create a cyan one. transformation in the preview window and I'm gonna start with some curves here. So let's close the preview. Mask. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is make the stars a little bit smaller before I add them back in. So to do that, I'm going to do morphological transformation. And I'm just going to try these parameters. Um, Okay, let's see how that does. Let's go over to O3, do the same. S2, I'm just removing this, the smaller stars. 
Okay, so to add these stars back in, I'm just going to uh, create this expression. So let's do 4x, and because I want it to be the same brightness, I'm going to do a third, and then I'm going to do times the parentheses um, aj stars plus O3 stars plus S2 stars close the parentheses and all right and these are our stars so this is our final image I'm pretty happy with it um, I could bring down those greens but I'm just gonna keep it in for now so I hope you all really liked this tutorial um, I really appreciate any feedback that you guys have and I'd love to see what your guys's images look like and yeah, thank you all so much, and if you could, please like and subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. All your support means, like, everything to me. So until the next video, clear skies.